Now, John, you mentioned that your father was in the FBI for quite, quite a few years. What is his attitudes for this program, and have they changed? Yeah, that's been profound to watch his change, because when I grew up, he said rehabilitation of criminals was an oxymoron. Basically, it just doesn't happen. And so to watch him, and when he got to meet Marvin, too, and watch his change through his relationship with Marvin was incredible, because for two years, I really didn't even tell him I was going down to Lexington Prison. I told my mom, but I didn't tell my dad because I knew his opinion and his, his, his feelings towards you know, the incarcerated in general. So I, I, I really kind of kept it hush-hush now. Eventually, you know, they had that stained glass shop, and I would bring stained glass back as gifts for my mom and others, and then eventually my mom told my dad I was going down to the prison to work with this dog program. And he really didn't say much about it, but as they would come out and visit us in, here in Oklahoma, I would um, take my dad to, to, to go see Marvin up at the Minimum Correctional Center in Oklahoma City. And um, he actually made a cuckoo clock that was out of stained glass and it had stopped working. So we took that clock up there because Marvin could fix it because he built the clock. And so my dad got to meet Marvin there and he went into the prison, which I was really surprised about that he would do that. And he got to meet Marvin and then eventually as we talked, Marvin was released and paroled by the governor. So, And then once Marvin got out, he and I started working at our, we have a little hobby farm and we were hit by the tornado back about five years ago and destroyed our barn and dock and fencing. So Marvin and I spent basically two years repairing that place. Well, by then my parents had moved out here and my dad had, is living here and he would help as well. So he and Marvin would be working together out in the fields and, and Marvin came out every Saturday and we worked for about eight hours. And I'll never forget this one scene where we're in our, we're in our house having lunch and a football game was on, it was in the fall. And Marvin loved football, my dad loves football. So there the two of them are sitting in our family room and I'm making these barbecue sandwiches and they're laughing and they're talking about the game and I thought, here, I wish I had a picture of somebody that was, you know, former director of the FBI and Marvin who was in for murder, you know, mm -hmm. incarcerated. And here they are sitting together in the family room laughing and talking. And I just thought, you know, it just, I just thought to myself, it just really epitomizes the strength and power of this program, of what it can do, not only for the offender, but for society that looks in and it often is prejudiced, uh, you know, and sometimes rightly so, of uh, what people have done and, you know, crime acts they've done. So it's a, it's a, it was an amazing thing to watch that relationship develop. And my dad, it's really fun to listen to him talk about Marvin, too, because he says there are very few people he had ever met that, uh, uh, that basically said that, yeah, I, I did what I did, and I needed to pay for it, mm -hmm. and I did. And um, not that he ever made any excuses about what he had done. He said it was wrong, and it should be, and, and he needed to pay for it. And he's, my dad said it was extremely unusual to find somebody like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's why Marvin did so well, because he accepted what he did, and he, 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 he didn't make any excuses about it. I do want us to show the, some of your dad's comments from, from the, the video, The Dogs of Lexington, because I think it really shows how attitudes are, are, are changing about this program. It's ironic for me to have spent a lifetime in law enforcement and have you come up with a rehabilitation program that seems to have real, honest-to-God progress. And I can't uh, imagine a more unusual circumstance than having you know, been brought to this rehabilitation program by uh, a son that uh, in all the years that we talked about this sort of thing, I gave you uh, an impression that rehabilitation, in fact, did not work. So I'm, I'm just as amazed and happy to be part of this as I can be. I'm glad I'm alive to see it. Well, we see how the, the program affects people outside the prison, but what about the offenders that are working with these dogs, what type of changes do you see? Well, the changes that I see more than anything is they probably soften up a little bit because not much love in a prison, to be honest. And now they've got a dog that gives unconditional love. And they pet and love on the dog and take care of the dog's needs and work with the dog and the dog improves as they go along. And it makes them a softer person. They're less inclined to get in little petty squabbles with somebody else. Uh, you know, when you put a lot of men together, a lot of testosterone together kind of thing, 
you you do have some fights and that kind of stuff and we probably have no, no probably about it we do have less issues on the unit where the dogs are than anywhere else and those guys they just keep everything cleaner they they don't get involved in little petty jealousies that go on in the prison life and they get softer and just are a lot more responsible and a lot more careful and then they start getting that back to that hope that, you know, if I keep doing things right for a few years, I've got a chance to get out of here maybe. And it's just a snowball effect doing the right things more than anything. Yeah, I guess we should note that while, while Duke has stayed with you, most of these dogs, really all these dogs, go through the program and then are placed outside with people. That's exactly right. We keep them anywhere from a minimum of a month, sometimes up to four months. Some of the dogs that we get from the shelters do have a few issues. We don't take human aggressive dogs, but we get dog aggressive dogs and we have a high success ratio of working with them. You know, they usually go to the animal shelter because of some reason and usually it's something that we can work through. A lot of them are shy and they develop a lot of confidence by working the obstacle course, being with somebody almost 24 seven that's loving on them. Plus, they've got 119 other guys on the unit that pet them and love on them. So that helps a lot with the shy, timid dogs. And then if it's a kind of dog that gets in your trash, you got somebody there keeping them out of the trash and develops a habit. Just like a human can develop a habit after three weeks, dogs can develop. It's not doing something bad after a couple, three weeks the same way. So crate train, house train, we teach them to walk properly on leash in the hill position without pulling. We also have a cat there. A lot of people asked about the cat, but we don't want to adopt one of our dogs out to, to someone that's elderly and they're walking along and the cat ru a cat runs along and they chase after the cat and pull that person down, so we want them to get used to cats also. Then we teach them sits, stays, and downs. And, uh, and the inmates kind of get in some little competitions on that they don't get carried away with it and I, I kind of encourage that too because you know they want to see how long the dog will down and stay how long the dog will sit and stay and and various things like that so that's kind of neat we actually just had a little competition the other day we set a crate up and see which dog could get to the crate the fastest and go inside and close the crate door Duke would have probably won that except his offender was so excited that he got in there so fast they forgot to close the door. Because <laughs> Duke would stay there, as you can see. He's about as good as they get. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, you don't you? Yeah, before we came out into the studio, we were all sitting and visiting, and you had him sitting, and everyone was rubbing on him. He never moved. He would turn his head, yeah. but he never moved. Yeah. He's a, a good, good boy. boy. You're a good boy. So, John, what happens from here? Well, one of my hopes and prayers is that it will continue in not only here in Oklahoma in the veterinary profession, but abroad, that the veterinary profession will embrace it as it moves across the country, and it is. And Sister Pauline and I were able to speak at the Southwest Veterinary Symposium and show the dogs of Lexington there and to hundreds of veterinarians. And that's my goal and hope is to take it within my profession across the country and then hopefully internationally as well. And the same is true with the book, though, as well. I'm really hoping to help the children of the incarcerated as well, which 70% of children of the incarcerated end up becoming incarcerated. So one of the things we're working on, it's, it looks like it's going to happen in this state, is to get this book to every elementary school and library in the state and start with reading programs to help kind of break this cycle. The number one deterrent to incarceration is education. So we have shown that, st stats have shown that, so if we can get these kids reading and talking about some of these things that are going on in the home, hopefully we'll stop this cycle from occurring. So that's kind of a, it's a twofold thing for me really. It's working with the offenders and then the, especially the children of the incarcerated and then within my profession too. Yeah, it almost sounds like justice reform at, at, at its very best. Gentlemen, I, I want to appreciate each of you com coming in and best of luck with the new film. Yeah. And I just can't wait to see it. Yeah, you'll like it. Yeah.